Welcome to stage 12 of Love Welter 22. After taking a back seat on stage 11, the GC favourites will get back to the serious business of racing today with a summit finish on Peñas Blancas. Yesterday was a pretty relaxing day, but not for everybody. Race leader Remco Avenapool lost one of his key domestiques, the world champion Julian Alaphilippe. We already miss him. It's, uh, it was a bad crash. And uh, when we hear from the radio that he stopped, it was for all the group uh, not a good news, no? But today is another day. We try to do our best. We stay calm because we know that uh, Renko has a lot of time in, uh, between the first and second place. So we have time to, to recover and to, to keep our pace uh, until the top of the climb. It's not just a day for the GC contenders, there is also a prestigious stage victory up for grabs. Aujourd'hui, j'aimerais bien d'en échapper. Je pense qu'elle a pas mal de chances de se jouer euh, la victoire d'étape, mais je pense que ça va être une grande bataille parce que beaucoup de coureurs, euh, je pense, veulent être devant aujourd'hui, donc euh, j'espère en faire partie. Peñas Blancas has featured at La Vuelta once before in 2013, although the climb was four kilometers shorter. Thibaut Pinot put in a solid performance that day, finishing fourth behind the winner, Leopold Koenig. Ah, C'était un bon souvenir, euh, je crois que j'avais fait dans le top 5, ça va être quand même un call de 50 minutes, 1 heure, donc euh, forcément euh, ça sera un call de pur grimpeur et euh, 9 km c'est pas rien. Si un grimpeur qui arrive à prendre la bonne échappée, il a la grande chance de gagner aujourd'hui, parce qu'il n'y aura pas beaucoup de grimpeurs dans l'échappée, donc euh, voilà, on, on s'attend à une très très grosse bataille qui peut durer, euh, qui peut durer du temps. Ouais. Others have slightly hazier memories. No me recuerdo, ya la hemos hecho. Hace nueve años. Ah, no, no, no tenía ni idea. Yo olvido muy fácil. De no me acuerdo de nada. Iran finished 10th nine years ago. Stage 12 today is almost 193 kilometers between Salobreña and Peñas Blancas. The final climb 19 kilometers at 6.7%. There is bound to be an almighty rumble to get into the breakaway as they have an excellent chance of going all the way. Well, it took around 50 kilometers for the breakaway to form and it was a big one. 32 riders going up the road with only four teams missing out. Kofidis, Groupama FDJ, Lotto Sudal and Kern Farmer. The pace was high, over 47 kilometers an hour, and they quickly had a decent gap with Groupama FDJ and Quickstep Alpha Vinyl pacing the peloton. Jay Vine made the breakaway looking for a third stage win in his polka dot jersey. Mark Soler was also up there once again. Other big names included Richard Carapaz, almost 20 minutes off the pace overall, and Alexei Litsenko. The highest placed on GC was Wilco Kelderman, some 14 minutes down on Evanapool, so no major threat to the red jersey. Consequently, the gap soon yawned out to over seven minutes, and the stage victory would surely go to the breakaway. Samueli Battistella then went on the attack for Astana Kazakhstan, one of several teams at the front with multiple riders. The former under-23 world champion was trying to whittle down the breakaway for his teammate Lutsenko. Alperson de Koenig chasing on behalf of Vine. And then another moment of panic for Quickstep as Evanapool went to ground. It looked similar to Alaphilippe's crash yesterday, luckily for the Belgian, no major injuries. The peloton just slowing up to wait for the race leader. The main bunch were now more than 11 minutes behind the breakaway who had reeled in Battistella. Evanapool sporting a bit of road rash but he was able to keep going and Louis Fafaka was soon called back from the breakaway to help him on the final climb. So 31 riders at the front preparing to tackle Peñas Blancas with almost 11 minutes in hand. Matteo Fabro setting the pace for Kelderman who was heading back into the top 10 overall. Little by little this leading group was thinned out. In the peloton Jumbo Visma had taken over pacing duties with Rowan Dennis on the front. They managed to shave two minutes off the gap. With nine kilometers to go, the front group was down to around 10 riders. 
The first man to unleash was Eli Gebert from Arkea Samsic. That was the end of Jay Vine's bid for a third stage victory. The Frenchman opening up a small gap with four men chasing Kelderman, Marco Brenner, Carapaz and Jan Palance. Henrik Maas then tried his luck in the peloton but Renko Evenepoel was straight on his wheel. Carapaz then putting in a huge attack with 2k to go and nobody was able to stay with the Ecuadorian. He led by 10 seconds heading into the final kilometre. Look at the pedal stroke of Carapaz. There's no doubt he's feeling good today. Carapaz turns the corner and makes his way towards the line. This rider has had an awful first 11 days of La Vuelta. He's re remained every single day defiant and said that eventually things will come good. Well, today they are coming good. The Olympic champion, the winner of the Giro d'Italia, podium finisher in La Vuelta, the Ecuadorian eagle, bangs the handlebars, says to everybody, there you go, there's the form, this is what I trade for I win the stage stage 12 goes to Richard Carapaz the GC favorites finishing over seven and a half minutes down on Carapaz with Evan Apool showing no ill effects after that crash on the contrary the Belgian was first to the line ahead of Mass, Roglic and Ayuso with Carlos Rodriguez losing a handful of seconds Richard Carapaz takes his first stage victory at La Vuelta, having already won three stages at the Giro d'Italia. He'll now be looking to complete the set on the Tour de France. The Olympic champion also wore the red jersey for five days in 2020, eventually finishing second overall. He's looking to round out his time at the Ineos Grenadiers on a high note before joining EF Education Easy Post in 2023. <laughs> Habíamos venido con un objetivo aquí y, y bueno, no, las circunstancias no se dieron y nos habíamos entrado ahora pues sin intentar ganar una etapa y la verdad que bueno, muy contento por ello. Hay etapas que son, son muy buenas, lo seguiré intentando, eh, aprovechar al máximo sobre todo el nivel que tenemos ahora y bueno, no, lo que ahora en adelante pues eh, si eh, podemos conseguir otra etapa pues bienvenida sea. Carapaz taking his 15th career win by nine seconds from Kelderman, with Soler passing his teammate Palance to complete the day's podium. Evan Apoel led in the GC group in 15th place at 7 minutes and 39 seconds. No major changes in the top five, with Evan Apoel still comfortably clear of Roglic and Mass. Ayuso gained a few seconds on Rodriguez, while Kelderman jumps up to sixth place. Polanski is also inside the top 10. Mats Pedersen still tops the green jersey standings with Soler going up to second. The gap is 88 points. Vine cracked on the final climb today, but he is still the king of the mountains ahead of his teammate Rob Stannard. Soler goes up to third there. Evan Apoel is over four minutes clearing the white jersey standings with Rodriguez and Ayuso still battling for second place. There are no categorised climbs on stage 13, but that doesn't guarantee a bunch sprint. Plenty of lumps and bumps on the road to Montilla and a tricky finish that could suit the puncher sprinters like Mads Pedersen. The heat is also going to be a factor, with temperatures once again hitting more than 30 degrees.